the situations is, uh, is the most interesting part. And uh, as, all, as all you guys know, Ed's, uh, or may or may not know, Ed is a USC prosthodontist. Uh, he graduated uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago. And uh, he's been practicing uh, here in, uh, I think he practiced in LA for a little while too, right? Two years in Beverly Hills, and I came up here on July 1st, 78. In 78, he's been at the same location, uh, I think, since. So we always enjoy working with him, always get uh, interesting cases uh, referring back and forth, and appreciate uh, his time today. I don't know if, all, if any of you knew, or all of you knew, Ed, uh, Ed wanted to be a cowboy, or a real cowboy, uh, before being a dentist. Uh, I'm not sure if you made the right decision. Cowboys are, they have a lot more fun. After I got sure. back from the Army, I decided I needed to make more money. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. And so lassoing cows didn't, didn't cut it for, for, any, for paying for anything. Uh, and he was also, uh, you know, in the in Vietnam War, uh, he was a uh, helicopter uh, gunner and uh, landed behind enemy lines. And I think you, you escaped to Thailand, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, and just glad to have him around because his experience is, uh, is worth a million dollars. Um, it, it taught me just in one of our, our meetings, I was telling Dr. Agnelletti today um, that uh, how to use a Richwell crown remover more effectively than squeezing it between two teeth. And I've been using it ever since, and every time I do it, I thank you. It's these little pearls of wisdom that we pick up from one another that, uh, that really help uh, uh, expedite our practices. Um, for those people who haven't been practicing as long as Dr. Walker or the other senior guys here, uh, you know, I, I think as we go through our practices and, and our education, our clinical education, we realize that uh, there's nothing that can replace uh, experience, and uh, that, I think that goes across the board for anything. But uh, but anything that everything that we think we know when we get out is sometimes completely turned up upside down and on its head, and uh, and. Gathering cases like this over the years is so valuable and documenting them. Because when I went to his office, I mean, he was taking pictures just for the fun of it. And, and I, it's a lot of work to take pictures. It's not easy. But it's, it's, it's something nice that you can present. And also, uh, you know, for, doc, for legal, medical legal uh, reasons, um, it's, uh, it's important. Unfortunately, what happened is that in the translation of, uh, of, of putting all those pictures on, on drives and so on and so forth, uh, we had a little bit of a glitch. So we're going to have to go off of Google, um, so there, there will be this Google order on it, unfortunately, but, uh, but I think Ed's going to walk us through each case individually. So, uh, a warm welcome for Dr. Ed Walker. Hello, friendly faces. Um, feel free to ask me questions at any time, interrupt me. I have a tremendous number of slides, and some of them I will go through quickly, so I won't bore you too much. There's a fairly wide variety of things that I do here. Um, starting, this is my oh my god tape. I mean slide. Uh, I've seen cases like this, and this generally happens when the implants don't integrate. And what do you do now? I mean, you, you look. You need a, a good surgeon to take these out, and then you have to start all over again. And I've seen this. You know, this is just terrible. And. Then we have something like this. 42-year-old from China. This implant was placed in Reno. I mean, for God's sake. And usually, when I ask people, why did you do that? They said, that's the only place that I have any bone. What do you think, Dr. Gifford? Nice. I mean, this is right at the hypogenical uh, border. What I plan to do with this individual, look at this concavity. She's going to probably end up having to have orthodontics. She's lacking posterior support. They're going to, at this point in time, in the old days, you used to have to take a trip to get this implant out. And now they can use a reverse torque uh, instrumentation. However, I still have visions of taking out the cortical plate when they kind of work like that. And if they do do that, we already got a defect, all we've done is enhance it. You know, I just, I, this amazes me when people do this. And she's already got bone loss and lack of attached tissue in the lower. And she's got terrible, I mean, she's got a vertical overlap. Hardest cases to restore are extremely deep vertical overlaps. This is a lady I saw. This is referred to me by a specialist, and he wanted me to restore these two implants, actually all four. Two I thought was pretty easy. 
That's number two. Oh, my. I mean, so I, and I said, well, are you going to take them out and grab those areas and we'll start over? He said, no, I'm going to try to leave them there. And I said, well, if you, you think I might be able to restore these, you're going to at least have to give me a skin grab. I never saw her again. Can you believe that? I mean, I cannot believe that people actually do that. The nice thing is I didn't have to restore it. I never saw it again. The first one I showed you, I will have to restore it.